Hayes, the Director of the Congregational Ministries and Resources for the Moravian Board of Cooperative Ministries. And I welcome you to our newly reopened, little reopened office. We're really technically not open yet, but we are here filming this because it's the best place for us to be able to show you about the curriculum for next year. We're going to talk a little bit about the importance of why you need to order curriculum. We're going to talk a little bit about how you go about ordering it, and then I'll show you some of the new pieces that are available for this year. So let me start by saying um, what you're going to see on your screen is a a uh, web shot of our ordering site, moraviancurriculum.org. This is the welcome page that you will come to when you get ready to learn about what we're going to offer. It's very important that these orders be placed with us by the 1st of August. That's August 1, 2020 because we have to get numbers to publishers to get that curriculum. And we are really reliant on you placing those standing orders with us this year and helping us to get the numbers. Now, the one thing that we are doing this year that's a little different is we know many of you are in a state where you still are not meeting physically in Sunday school classes and you don't need print resources. So we are making an exception this quarter for fall quarter and saying if you want to do not need those resources in print, we're going to defer those orders and you will not receive the fall, but you would only re you would begin to receive it in the winter, which is in December. Hopefully by then, we will have a better idea about where our churches are, are in this process. But all you have to do is when you place those standing orders, and you still need to place the standing order for the year, but when you get to the, to the ordering site, there will be a site, a place that says memo line. In that memo line, if you do not want fall curriculum, that is if you want to defer and have your curriculum to begin in December, please say defer fall shipment and you will not receive a fall shipment. You will not be charged for a fall shipment. Usually we turn numbers in a about four months in advance to publishers for what we need. I know that it's kind of an uncertain time and we will we may have to make some adjustments but for right now we're going to go with this policy so get those orders filled out and to me by the 1st of August 2020. It's really an easy site especially right now it's much easier because You'll understand in a few minutes when I talk a little bit about the curriculum why it's so much, going to be so much easier this year. But the big thing is we would love to have it on the website or via email so that we have a print copy of what you want and the exact titles of what that curriculum piece is. That way there's no guesswork. So if you can at any possibility, try to go into the website and place your orders via the website. It makes it a lot easier for me. It'll make it a lot easier for you. So you're ready to place this order and what you're going to need to know is that we have made some pretty significant changes in our philosophy at the board for this year regarding um, the curriculum ordering and sales. We feel like that churches are in a place right now where you're going to need lots of consultation, lots of resources, sometimes some help in how to do things virtually. So we would like to place our big concentration on consultation and resourcing the churches. That does not mean that we're not going to sell curriculum. What it does mean is that we have cut 
back and we are only going to stock and sell curriculum from the partner publishing denominations that we work with. That would be Cokesbury slash Abingdon, the PCUSA, and the Brethren Press and Mennonite um, Publishing House. Those are the pieces that we will stock, we will order. Those are the pieces that you will find in your catalog. Now, you may be a church that has ordered something from Lifeway or something from David C. Cook or something from Union Gospel Press from me in the past or Sparkhouse. We are not going to offer those options now. We're trying to scale back our curriculum sales a little bit. What we will offer you is we will tell you about these curriculum. We will tell you what's good, what to look out for. We will give you the publisher, the contact number, and you are responsible for going to that publisher, setting up an account, and placing those orders for your church directly. That means that you have to keep up with their deadlines. Their deadlines are, we are much more stringent than our deadlines are, so you have to be very aware of that. Try not to wait until the last minute for when you need some resource because you're going to wind up in real trouble. When you go to our, our catalog, there is going to be a tab that is going to say other resources. That is a table that will have a list of all the other resources that are available out there along with their websites. If you have that information, you should be able to get in touch with the publisher directly and know exactly what you're going to order. Um, if there are questions, and I'll be glad to help you along the way because we know that this is a different kind of procedure, but again, we are going to offer what's available from Cokesbury slash Abingdon Press, from the PCUSA, and from the John Mennonite Publishing House. Um, and we will do this with the same in the same way that we've done it before. You place the standing orders, you'll get the shipment from us, you will be invoiced from us. If it's local, you are not charged shipping because you've come and pick it up. If you are from a distance, you're still charged a little bit of shipping, but it's probably not nearly what you'll have to pay as directly from the publishers. So know that we're providing this service and hoping that this will help you. These are the curriculum that we feel like are most, um, most like the Moravian theologically, educationally, they're sound biblically, and we feel like that it offers a good selection of choices. They are people, publishers who we have worked with very closely in the past in cooperating with writing curriculum and selling curriculum, and we feel very confident with this. So know that you can go, you'll be able to get those things, by, and they are all in our catalog, that made the catalog much, much smaller, so it's a lot easier to manage this year and to be able to find exactly what you're looking for. Again, if you have questions about any of it, I will be glad to, to walk you through and help. But I'd like to take this time now to introduce you to some of the new components, some of the standard components of all three of these publishers and show you exactly what you can get from us. Again, our emphasis is going to be to help you not only with the print curriculum, but we see the faith formation going in very much of a hybrid format in the future. And you're going to need access to things, not only print things, but virtual things. And that is going to be a new thing for a lot of churches, and we're here to work with you, to help you, to find what is needed. We are 
really excited about Celebrate Wonder because it is a really cool curriculum that engages kids' imaginations and thinking creatively about stuff. This curriculum really has them connect to the Bible and the scriptures in a way that just celebrates them being a child. My favorite thing about Sunday School is the activities we get to do and it's fun and I get to learn more about Jesus. Kids want to learn through different modalities like art and science and experiencing things and telling stories and so I love that Celebrate Wonder will hit on each one of those things and it will help kids wonder in a way that just comes naturally to them. One thing I'm really passionate about is helping kids connect to scripture on a personal level and really making their faith their own. And so what I think is really cool about Celebrate Wonder is it invites kids to come to the scripture, to the text as themselves. It's not an adult telling them how it should be or how it is or what the correct answer is. They're exploring it for themselves, they're wondering about it for themselves, and they're coming as individuals to the text. I knew the concept of a lot of Bible stories, but I really like getting to know like the whole story and like different parts of it. It really teaches you everything you need to know about the Bible and about Jesus, and it builds you up as you're growing. here to tell you a little bit about the new offering for children from Cugsbury Press. It is called Celebrate Wonder and it looks a little bit like this. It looks very, very colorful. You'll like all the color, all the images that you're going to see. This is the curriculum that's taking the place of the Deep Blue Kids curriculum. That will not be available anymore, so you have to switch. To, the, to celebrate wonder, which will look a little different to you, be a little bit different and have a different title. Um, it talks a little bit about the spiritual life of children and their awe, their wonder, their imagination and their curiosity to help. All of that helps to shape their faith as they are going along. It gives them a safe place for them to ask questions about their faith and to claim their identity as a child of God. I really like this curriculum, what I've seen of it. I think you will like it too. With Deep Blue Kids, you followed kids along the way in telling of the story. That's different with Celebrate Wonder. So there, there are different components that you're going to find. You're going to find a leader's guide for every age level. You will find activity sheets for each age level and you will find a class pack which will come in a in a, a ziploc bag that has posters attendance posters and things like that for each age level there's also what they call a family activity book which looks like this and this is a great piece if, you, if we are still at home doing virtual Sunday school and you are responsible for trying to help your child to learn something, this, these are activity ums, that you can do in your family at home that are age appropriate for the kids. So it's a great, they didn't not think about virtual, but but this is certainly a piece that can be used if you're going to do some faith formation virtually. Or you can blend it and you might you be in a classroom some, but you might at times use something like this in your family. So that's very important. They also have a Bible storybook that will contain every one of the stories for the year that are going to be used in the curriculum. So the Bible storybook is not essential, but it certainly will help you as you're going along planning your lessons and things like this. Now the age groupings for this curriculum are a little bit different than Deep Blue Kids. They start with an age three to five, which is your preschool age. 
Then they moved to an uh, age six through eight, which is basically primary, early elementary age. And then they moved to a nine and above, which is your tweens, your middle schoolers, and things like that. So every one of, of those age levels are covered. In every leader's guide, the first page that you'll come to every week has what they call a faith word that you're going to concentrate for the week. I think one of them was spirit. I'm trying to... Um, they're, they're always found on the very first page of the leader's guide along with the spiritual practice practice that's going to be emphasized for that particular age group for that week. Um, then you're going to find an extended lesson plan. It's on four pages. It's got four components to it. The coming together, the um, worship, to, the wonder time together, which is the story time, the experiencing wonder, which is the craft science type activities and then going in peace which is the closing part so every leader's guide is divided into those sections and makes a whole lot of sense again from what i've seen of this curriculum i think you're going to really like it there is a music cd that's produced annually so that means that occasionally they'll mention a song and it'll be on that particular CD, so um, that's important to remember. Again, um, I'm trying to that that cut pretty well covers that. Now, many of you are going to ask me, well, what does that do to the little kids, the toddlers, the nursery kids? Well, they have created what they call dearly love. It looks like this. <coughs> And it's the toddler and infant and toddler piece to this curriculum. But it's got a different title. It says, Dearly Loved. Now, what they're going to do is um, every church really likes being able to welcome babies and families as they are beginning the faith journeys together and for, to give helps on how for the families to feel safe and secure in the church. There are 15, uh, 12 Bible story units that are divided into five sessions. So that means, you know, you'll have enough for the whole year this way. And everything is contained in, within the books that you'll need along the way. Um, there's also a piece that is called I think this is the piece um, that's called Partnering with Parents. It, what it does is it's in a newsletter format that you can email or you can put in the snail mail, whichever way you want to, once a month to parents. It gives an age level characteristic for a particular age that they're considering and some tips on how to parent and how to to um, help to spread the faith in your family. So I think that's really important. And it's a piece that I don't know that I've, I've seen it in some other, one other curriculum, but this one I really like because you can just stick it in the mail along the way. The other question that I'm sure you're gonna ask is, what if we were using the one room schoolhouse, which many of you used from the Deep Blue Kids. They did not do away with the one room schoolhouse. It is still there. It looks like this. There's a leader's guide. There's a reproducible participant's guide. There's a classroom kit. Um, and it's where if you are a smaller church and you can't divide your kids the way that they're supposed to, you know, you want a bigger class, but you don't have the kids. It, this is a great option for that because it blends all the ages and lets them do those kinds of things. So those are the three things that are replacing the deep blue 
um, curriculum and they're brand new from Coatesbury and you'll love being able to see some of it. In addition to that, there we, for the youth, there is the Bible lessons for youth, which were new last year. They are thematically done quarterly with a leader's guide and a student book. And um, they, it used to be the old cooperative uniform lessons, but now they have gone to a more of a thematic type lesson. And it's very, very good. Then for the adults, your option is called the adult Bible studies. And again, it's done quarterly, it's done thematically. It, they tend to use the same things for the youth and for the adult, which I think is good because it lets you see the difference. This one comes with a leader's guide, with a large print book and a small print book, and a DVD if you're interested. Um, the other thing that's really nice about this is that for the time being, and I don't know how long this will last, but it's important to remember because I think that they're planning and doing it into the fall, the lessons are, are done virtually and their Amplify website, which they're going to use as a subscription base eventually. But um, for right now, it's free. It's going to be a free resource while COVID is going on. So that will help you if you've got classes that are meeting, but they don't, but not in your physical space. You have a way to teach this virtually. I didn't want to forget about the option from Cokesbury called Bible Story Basics. It was actually new last year and a lot of our smaller churches really took on to this curriculum because it's geared more for smaller churches who are going to broadly grade their kids and it, it met with some success. Um, this curriculum is on a three-year cycle so that once three years is done don't throw the curriculum out because they're going to just repeat it every three years which I think is probably a good plan. Um, it helps for a child to go through the cycles and understand the underlying story that is in the Bible and how it's, they are nurtured and grow in their faith through these stories. This is what the curriculum looks like. Um, some of you remember having seen this from last year. It comes in a pre-reader and a reader level. The pre-reader is geared for ages three to seven. The reader level is for kids who maybe are age eight to 11. Um, that can maneuver a little bit of more reading than what's in the pre-reader category. Um, there is a leader's guide for each of them that carries Bible background in there and a devotional for, to help you prepare for the week. And then a very good lesson plan. And again, it's done on a pre-reader level leader's guide and a reader level guide. <clears throat> There are leaflets that are available with activities. Then there's a class pack that has, again, the attendance chart. It has a music CD in the class pack that carries the music for the, for the year. And also there is, they created a Bible storybook for this particular curriculum. Again, it's very similar to Celebrate Wonder, the storybook is not essential that you buy, but it will help you along the way, I think. Um, again, churches that used this last year were made basically your smaller churches that said, oh, well, we've got three or four kids that are preschool, and we've got three or four kids that are maybe primary 
age level and so it worked for them in that respect and they are bringing this back i don't know how long it will continue but again they're going to do three years and then repeat the cycle again so it's one of these pieces where if you've got leaders guides or storybooks um or the music cd you may want to hang on to it because it may be useful to you in the future The Growing in God's Love, a Story Bible curriculum was really built as a companion curriculum for the Story Bible. So it's really, it's not really possible to use the curriculum without using the Story Bible along with it. Um, so much of the questions and the activities really relate to how those um, stories were written and the spirit and imaginative um, spark that really happens in those stories really shine through in the curriculum. So this is intentionally a multi-age curriculum, meaning that you're going to group your children from kindergarten up through about fifth or sixth grade, that's about your five to 10 age uh, range together. We wanted that mixed age group purposefully because this curriculum is very relational and we wanted to really foster cooperation and collaboration. Um, through that and the best way to do that is with a mixed age base. Also recognizing a lot of our reality now is that a lot of our churches are working with mixed age groups. Uh, it's not all churches anymore have age groups where it's like kindergartners all together and first graders are all together and second graders and third graders are all together. Uh, there's a lot more mixed ages uh, now and so this curriculum really just jumps in with that wholeheartedly. This is a unit-based curriculum, meaning that you purchase only the units that interest you or that you think are going to work best in your situation. Um, it's not like a quarterly curriculum where you're going to get a new uh, unit every quarter. Uh, this is a unit that you'll purchase once and can use as many times as you need to. Uh, in each unit, there are three, four, or five sessions. Um, and these are available in the print or downloaded form. The units are kind of grouped together in different ways. Some of them are grouped by characters. So for example, you have a um, unit all about Abraham and Sarah. And this starts at the beginning of their story when they're not even called Abraham and Sarah, they're called Abram and Sarai. And then they move into, um, you know, them, their whole story of you know journeying into a new land and having their children and their children start to grow up and have you know fun uh, issues um, so it really does a good job of following characters through their whole story arcs in the bible um, for the units that are grouped by characters which i think is really good because i think a lot of times um, especially in some of your uh, quarterly curriculums you kind of touch on this story and then you leave it for a while and then you may come back to it in a couple more weeks but this really hits the overarching uh, story for a lot of those characters um, but we also have lots of other characters that we follow as well there's also some units that are grouped by themes or topics so we have things like brave men and women of the Old Testament so that's all about stories of bravery and courageousness that are found in the Old Testament we also have things like uh, stories Jesus told, which is a whole unit on the parables um, that Jesus shared with us and taught us. We have things like, um, you know, uh, people Jesus met, which includes some of the stories of people that he met and taught with. We have uh, healings and miracles, which also talks about a lot of the healings and miracles that Jesus performed. So there's all kinds of stuff um, in here that is just, it, it's really great. And you can look at the units that most interest you. Um, within each unit, you have four intergenerational uh, and home ideas per session. So that means if you have a unit that has five sessions, you are going to have 20 intergenerational and home ideas um, minimum, which is really awesome. And we'll talk more about details of that coming up. Um, we also have some great unit overview information that helps uh, us understand how all of these stories flow together in that larger theme or character com uh, context. And then we also have some great uh, information to help the leaders as they're preparing to lead um, this particular uh, unit or session. So these are, these are really fabulous. 
The curriculum that we're going to talk about right now is coming from the Presbyterian Church USA. Um, and there are various options there, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about all of them. You probably remember hearing Growing in Grace and Gratitude from last year. It's not changed. It's still there. It's still the same. You get the leader's guide and you get the reproducible color sheets with every order that you do. And it it is basically, they have done no changing with this. So it's a pretty good option along the way. One thing I will tell you is that if you go, if you're a Facebook person and you go to Point, which is the Presbyterian, oh goodness, organized, Presbyterians organized for nurture and teaching. They have every week taken Growing in Grace and Gratitude and done a virtual lesson around the particular one. That has been so helpful to some churches who are Zooming with kids and trying to do faith formation at home. So take a hint and go to their web, to that website, or it's not a website, it's actually on Facebook, and see those ideas and those lesson plans because that has been, to me, a great addition. Um, they have a new curriculum this year, and I don't want you to get confused with the first one. The first one was Growing in Grace and Gratitude. The new curriculum is called Growing in God's Love, and it's based on the storybook that came out last year that was so popular. And what they did was they took the storybook and they designed units about anywhere from four weeks to six weeks on a story and that it's just the most enjoyable fun thing that I think I've seen. You can go on their website and download a sample of the Who is Jesus session if you want to see what one looks like. But these units you buy by the unit and you get to choose the one that you want to start with or think about. Um, it's just a really great curriculum. It's very, very flex flexible if you are thinking that you're going to be doing some virtual teaching on Zoom um, in homes because it lends itself to that. And I think they did not intend for that to happen, but it's just the way that it particularly was designed. So it's good for any age from kindergarten through grade five. Again, it has the companion storybook. I would, I think you're gonna have to have this if you're gonna teach this particular curriculum. But um, it's a it's a great option. I, I was, I have just been intrigued with what I've seen with it. And um, the first units will be coming out in July. So you can choose to begin this in the fall and just float right on through the units there. I think in the um, in July they're releasing six units. They'll release six more in October, six more in December, which will be more Advent Christmas oriented and, and so on during the year. So again, I, I, I can't commend this enough um, because I think it's, uh, the storybook has been very popular with the I Wonder questions and at the end of the stories and things like that. But I think the curriculum is a win-win um, from what I can tell about it. Again, with the PCUSA, there are a couple adult options that you can consider. One is the popular present word, which is based on the Cooperative Uniform Lesson Series. It's done as a quarterly. It comes with a leader's guide that can be either regular print or large print. It comes with student books that can be regular print or large print. It has a worship leaflet that if you have a Sunday school class that does an opening, that's an old tradition, but some churches still have it. 
and it's great for doing that particular thing. The other adult option that's along the way is the feasting. It's actually more than an adult option. It's an option for all ages. It's called Feasting and the Word. It's based on the Revised Common Lectionary, and it's a great piece. It's very scholarly, but yet very well done. It comes on every age level from kindergarten through adult, even with a young adult piece. So that's important to remember. There's also a piece that's called Joining the Feast that's designed especially for pastors who want to tie the, what they're doing in worship with what you're doing in faith formation because you're teaching the same lessons and because you're using the common, revised common lectionary text. So um, it has children's sermons. It has ways that you can involve the kids in the service. It's just a, a great curriculum that's been out for a couple years. Um, again, it's you get a guide, a leader's guide only. The, the student piece is reprodu anything that's in there is reproducible for students. You can also choose to go directly to PCUSA and buy this online as an online component um, if that suits your needs better. Again, we can't do that here because it is an online component, but but feel free to make take advantage of that opportunity along the way. So lots of options from the PCUSA and all of them fairly good. Don't forget with the youth, there's a the series called Faith Questions that is about 35 or 40 units that are done topically. And we have lots of those around. So. You might want to use those. It lends itself well to a coffee house model of discussion um, with youth groups and things like this. The next curriculum that we're going to talk about is put out by the Brethren Press and Men and Media together. And this, these publishers have done a phenomenal job. We used to partner with them in an old curriculum called Bible Quest that was very popular. And then they asked us when that dissolved if we wanted to be a part of this. So we became a partner in this. Um, this particular publishing company publishes the most popular VBS curriculum every year. It, they are just they do a phenomenal job with the educational theory and principle that they use. Um, with their curriculum, which has been out for a couple years now, um, it's called Shine, Love Jesus, Grow in Faith, and Change the World. Now, that is so appropriate right now, I think. Um, children can come into the classroom, know that they're welcome, that they're loved, they can get their questions answered and they're taken seriously. And they can gather to hear of the story of God and learn a little bit about what it's like to shed God's light to other people in the world. It's just a great curriculum. Again, it has leader's guides, it has student books, and it has resource packs. It's graded all the way from early childhood, which is your preschool, to primary, to which is your elementary, to an older elementary piece, which is, and then a tween piece. And that, it really has met with a lot of success in the, in the past. What's new this year is they've created a new book called All of Us, which contains all of the Bible stories done in two different formats. The first format is they use the actual biblical text from the story and create a reader's theater um, for the children to use in the classroom. The second format for all of us is an illustrated piece because the younger children aren't necessarily going to get as much into the reader's theater, but they will get involved if they see pictures of the Bible story. 
So that's brand new this year, and it's called All of Us. And um, that's that's the new part of this curriculum. The, the They have changed the middle school piece, has a devotional guide now, um, rather than just a leaflet. Um, it meets the need a little bit more. Again, the other thing that this curriculum offers is a wonderful story Bible. I know you say, there's a Bible with every one of these curriculum, and that's true. But whatever you choose, you probably want at least one copy of the Bible there because they may reference it along the way. This has been a particularly strong story Bible, and a lot of people have really used the story Bible a good bit. Um, the curriculum started off slowly. We didn't have a lot of people using it at first, but last year, we picked up several customers, several larger church customers, and they really fell in love with the curriculum and the emphasis that they put on the world and peace in the world. And that was important to those people, and they like the curriculum. I would be really remiss if I did not end this with a few options from the Moravian Church for curriculum options. Things that maybe not don't won't last for a whole year, but they may would supplement lots of things. You may be able to use them in a virtual setting if you're doing some virtual stuff. So I wanted to, take, to finish by telling you a little bit about this. The first one that I'm going to tell you about is called Living Branches. And this curriculum was designed as a 13-week curriculum, so it would last you about a half a year, um, designed to teach Moravian history, customs, and practices. It's done on an early elementary level, an older elementary level, a youth level, and an adult level. The adult level is kind of unique because it takes Moravian hymns and teaches the history and the customs and practices through the language of the hymns. And a lot of people have really loved this particular option. Everything is contained in the notebooks that you need. You can run off anything that you want. There are patterns in there. The notebooks, if you buy the notebooks in already printed out like this, it's fine, we will sell those to you, but the big advantage of this is that all you have to do is email me and ask me for the link to Living Branches, and you get a link to all four people, uh, all four age levels, and you can print off your own. So you don't necessarily have to buy a notebook from us. You can do your own printing off, which I think is great a great economical thing and you can share it with people so again all you have to do is email me and i will send you the link to get to the online version of this um again it's called living branches grow moravians growing in faith love and hope <clears throat> there's also a piece called simply moravian it's been used in confirmation, <coughs> confirmation classes with children, with adults, teaching about Moravian essentials, and, <clears throat> and it's very well done. And I think there may be a couple more of these coming, but this is the first edition, and it goes through Gregory uh, the Patriarch and talking about the essentials. The third piece that I'm gonna tell you about is called Loving Hearts United. It is a Moravian guide for Christian living. It can be used as a Sunday school curriculum, or it can be used as a devotional piece in your families. There is a, this is a piece that you can sign up for a weekly email and you get a segment of it every week with a prayer so that your families can do this. It's just emailed to you every week. Again, it's a great piece 
to use in our day and time now where we may not be able to meet physically, but we are able to meet virtually and there are lots of ideas in here that you can pick up. I thank you for joining us today to learn a little bit about what you can have for your church and how we can help you. Again, we're going to do a lot of more consulting and resourcing, especially on the virtual level, so that we can offer you lots and lots of ideas about how you might be able to blend what you're doing in Faith Formation at your church when you're able to go back to work to being in church and then what you can do virtually right now on Zoom. It's really easy and offers you a lot of options. Please feel free to give me a call, email me, to ask me questions. We've covered a lot of information, but I appreciate your attention today and get those orders in by August the 1st.